Hi, everybody. I'm Lori Covens, and um, I'm particularly honored to be here today for a couple of reasons. This is um, my first published piece after sort of um, doing the writing version of Singing in the Shower for a really <laughs> long time. And um, the events that inspired this piece happened exactly a year ago, Father's Day weekend. And, um, and I've excerpted from, uh, from the full piece in uh, the current issue. The Wedding Dance. I drove just above the speed limit all the way from Durham to Baltimore. I sat and drove in suspended animation, hoping I would get to the hospital in time to see my dad, trying not to think about how my life would feel without him in it. I drove straight to the hospital. I was so glad to get there and find him alive. He didn't understand where he was or what was happening to him. He had been so severely agitated that the hospital staff had to put him in restraints. But dad saw me and said, hey, Laurie Bell, I'm so glad to see you. I love you, Lar. We spent the afternoon together navigating bouts of fear tempered with the comfort of being together. I don't know why they're keeping me prisoner here, he said. I'm so happy to see you, but I don't want them to get you too. I'm glad to see you too, Dad. No one's going to get me. We're safe here. Back in the car, while I waited for the air conditioning to kick in, I thought, Dad won't be here to dance at my wedding. I am not, except in the most theoretical sense, a bride-to-be. As a little girl, I never dreamed of growing up to marry Prince Charming. The road I'm on may take me down the aisle eventually, or not. I love my friends, my family, my work. I feel good about my life from the inside out. But I can tell you this. If you had asked me at any age or stage in my thinking about myself and marriage, I could have told you unequivocally that at my wedding, if I had one, I would dance with my father to Al Martino's Daddy's Little Girl. Somehow, the idea of my world without my father distilled itself into that one moment that would probably never be. All the defenses that usually hold me together in a crisis, keep me centered and focused, fell away and left me in tears behind the wheel of my car. Some 48 hours later, I watched Dad sit up in bed, weak but restless. He was talking to people only he could see he reminisced with invisible old friends about golfing trips. He laughed with them about vintage Orioles games and was completely unaware of the 2010 FIFA World Cup blaring on the hospital room TV. Dad's visitors seemed to cheer him, and he was slowly responding to IV antibiotics. He spent more time awake and chatted as much with me and a few real-time visiting friends as he did with his invisible pals. He asked me when he could get dressed, and leave this terrible hotel room. Couldn't we at least go downstairs to the restaurant? The food here is awful. <clears throat> Once Dad discovered that he had the strength to stand up, he wanted to walk. Since laps around the nurse's station would be far too ambitious, I suggested he walk in place using the back of a chair for balance. Dad continued to sit, stand, sit, stand, walk in place, rest shuffle. With the running, kicking, and cheering of the World Cup in the background, Dad walked in place for a full minute. Then he looked at me, deadpan, and said, this is really boring. I chuckled, and then I asked him to dance. What do you mean, dance? I mean dance, Dad, nothing fancy, the hugging and swaying kind of dance, like a slow dance. Okay. I started to hum Daddy's Little Girl. After a few bars, Dad started to sing. He could barely stay on his feet, standing in the doorway between life and death. I hummed, he sang, and we both teared up as we danced through verses I'd long forgotten, but he remembered every single word. In that moment, my dad wasn't bored, he wasn't scared, he wasn't a prisoner. He wasn't dying. He didn't wonder where he was or what was happening or where he should be. And we were dancing the father-daughter dance I thought we would never have. 